After we optimize the camera alignment, we kind of refine things, we are moving uh, out of the alignment step, but the last thing we need to do is to adjust the boundary reason, region or this boundary box. Uh, I think this is kind of a kind of hidden or underutilized trick that you could use, and adjusting this boundary region can potentially save time, reduce your computer RAM usage, which is that short-term memory that it uses for a lot of projects in this building process. Um, and for the next reconstruction steps, like building the 3D mesh model or point cloud, it can make it more accurate and also save time. Okay. There's three ways that you can adjust the boundary region, and this is that gray box that appears after the alignment step. You can move the box as a whole, so keeping the shape but moving it. You can resize it, so you can make it this kind of a flat rectangular shape looking. You can make it taller, you can resize it, and then you can rotate it. You can tilt it and rotate it different ways. So let's go ahead and show how to do that and set up our model for what we will do later, building the 3D mesh model in Point Cloud. Okay, so we're back in our Metashape project. Let's go ahead and adjust this boundary region. So if you zoom out, this is this gray, kind of fine line looking box. Again, the boundary region is what Metashape kind of estimates as inside this area is what we think, or what Metashape thinks, is your main focus area of what you're going to build. Okay, so right now, if you move on to building a 3D model in a point cloud, it's also going to include, you know, this looks like some sidewalk or something like that with it. Maybe you're okay with that and that's fine, but again, to help speed things up, especially when you get into more complex projects or larger uh, projects, like maybe you have hundreds or thousands of photos, you really want to make sure you move this box or shrink it or adjust it to the size or the area of focus that you need. So let's go ahead and do this. So on the top menu bar here at the top where all these icons are, we have a couple of icons. This one's move region. This one's move object. We want to do move region. And there's an arrow next to it. Move region, resize region, rotate region. That's exactly what we want. Okay. So the first thing that I will probably do is check if I need it rotated. So if it kind of looks like it kind of matches the, the model. For the most part, this one does, you know, are these perfectly aligned at the bottom? This one's a little bit tilted more up than this one. Yeah, but I, I think that's okay. But let's go ahead and show you how to do that. So we can rotate it. There's this ball here where if you highlight on the points, um, we can move it. So I can click and move it this way. I can click and move it this way. Or if the green one, I can click and move it this way. Or I can just click in space anywhere and kind of move it. But this ball is a really good guide for that. So let me click back onto the navigation arrow and rotate my model a little bit better, you know, and I could rotate it, you know, however I want, you know, maybe I want to spin it this way or whatever, you know, I'll spin it a little bit this way. So then maybe it kind of matches that. It's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Moving the region, we can do moving. So there's these three X, Y, Z axes here. So the red one, we can move it this way green one we can move it up and down and the blue one we move it along the side here um, you can also just click and move it so we want to make sure that we don't do this because then when you build the model it's not going to include the rock wall we want to make sure it is somewhere inside here and it includes it okay so that's moving the region the next one which you will probably use most often is resize the region so I can click and rotate here and I want to shrink this down to kind of just include my model area. Now the top and bottom give it a little bit of buffer space. It doesn't need to be right on it. Um, but the sides, let's go ahead and shrink this down to what we want to include. Now maybe for my final 3D model, maybe I'm building this for a website that I want to embed it in, um, online shop, or, or I'm going to export it to some other program or something. Maybe I want a little bit of the model outside. That's okay. So let's go ahead and shrink it down. Maybe I don't want it right up against close. I think it's good to have a little bit of buffer area. Okay, but see how much less space that we're having than what we originally had. You can use these sides and move them like this. You just click and hold. Okay, I can click and hold here. I can go ahead and rotate it again if I want. So let me go ahead and rotate it. Again, um, if you're just doing this for kind of general purposes, you know, do a little bit of this to help save time. Kind of think about how you want your model to appear at the end. Um, you can also crop the model later on. So you can adjust this bounding box. But you can even have it like this really big and build the 3D model and then later crop this out. 
The advantage of doing it this way is this kind of crops it for you and it just can process a lot faster, especially we only have 38 photos for ours right now, but if you have 380 or 3,800, you know, lots of photos, um, doing the bounding box and kind of cropping it now is a big advantage. So it's just a good step to learn. So I'm gonna kind of keep it like that. Okay, so I've adjusted, I've moved the box anywhere I want to, I've resized it, and I rotate it any way I want to. I have my bounding region set. All right, now I'm telling Metashape, I am ready for you to process anything inside this box. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step to build our 3D model, and then later uh, the optional step of building the point cloud can do one last thing before we build the model after I've adjusted this boundary region is I can adjust the model. So adjusting the model can maybe get it in the right location that we want to. Again, maybe we're exporting this for 3D printing or some other use where the software that they use need it centralized or in kind of a zero zero coordinate location. Maybe you need your model to be top down, you know, top is up and you know bottom is down kind of thing. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So where we would also find the resize region, we can do move or rotate object, okay? But if we want to say get it in that zero zero central location, this is something I learned for if you're importing it into other software, you know, 3D animation software, um, you know, 3D printing or other things, having it in a, a kind of universal central location is important. So one trick that can work is by going to model at the top menu bar, show hide items, show grid. This grid is kind of that universal uh, up is up, down is down. So when you export this to other locations or other applications or software, um, it will be in the same position, if that makes sense. And Metashape does this by showing you here's the grid and you'll notice there's an X right there and that X is zero, 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 so X, Y, Z. So I wanna get my model, you know, if this is up and this is down, I wanna get it up is up and down is down, and I also wanna get it centered, okay? So I'm gonna turn off these markers just so I can see it a little bit better. So the first thing I like to do, and maybe you can approach it differently is I kinda of like to get this, you know, like a flat plane, and I wanna move my model up. So I'm gonna move this up kind of get it about a little bit above, maybe halfway, because I'm gonna rotate it next. Okay, I'm gonna press okay. I'm gonna press zero, because if I press zero, it kind of goes back to home where the model is. And okay, where's that X? The X is right here in the middle, it looks like. Okay, so now I want to rotate the model. Let's, and we're gonna do this maybe a few times to kind of get a little bit better at it, so let's rotate it. We're kind of looking at a top-down view kind of right here. You know, if we kind of rotate it like that. Okay, let's go ahead and get back to our arrow. Let's press zero. Okay, there's that X right there. It's very faint, but there it is. Okay, I'm a little bit better. Top is top, down is down. Let's rotate it again. Maybe rotate it that way. Let's go zero. Here's top down. Maybe I wanna rotate it that way. You, you kind of have to eyeball this very much. You have to do your best. Um, okay, I'm also a little off-centered. Here's the X. Let's move this. Maybe kind of get it generally in the center position. Let's rotate this. And then, so that's if I want it in the exact middle. And then if I want it kind of sitting on top, I can just move this up and have it highlight with the blue I can move it up or down. So I'll just kind of put it on top. Rotate at different angles so I can see how I'm off. I'm off by a little bit. And this takes practice, by all means. It takes getting used to rotating it and getting used to it. But um, again, depending on what you're using it for, if you're collecting measurements later on, like the height and things like that, having it facing up, you know, whatever's top, whatever's up is facing up and down is facing down. If you're exporting this to 3D printing and other things, it's important to get this you know, kind of centered. Okay, I think it's flat. Top down is top, it's kind of centered. So this looks pretty good. So we've adjusted the boundary region and we've also adjusted the model itself. So from here on out, when we build the, you know, 3D model and other steps, then, you know, it will do it accordingly as it's shown here. So let's go ahead and 
move on to the next step.